today i will be discussing on a sensation which is very interesting interesting in the sense this has been nomenclatured as a crude touch and it continues but lately this crude touch is no more crude now this crude touch is especially a touch associated with emotion or affective touch or a sensual touch we look into this in the current discussion i have just given one picture here showing two friends and their feelings you can all imagine you can try to predict what they are feeling about the sense crude touch and pressure or the sensations carried by the anterolateral column in the spinal cord in the spinal cord we have the posterior column and the lateral column and the anterior column so these are ascending as anterolateral column this anterolateral column carries sensations crude touch crude pressure pain thermal sensation tickle each and also the sexual sensations from the contralateral side of the body anterolateral column sensation or anterolateral column receives or forms two tracts one tract ventrally placed one tract laterally placed the one which is ventrally placed is known as the anterior spinothalamic tract and one which is placed in the lateral side is a lateral spinothalamic tract the anterior or ventral spinothalamic tract transmits crude touch deep pressure tickle and sexual sensation whereas lateral spinothalamic tract transmits pain again in pain there are two different components which i will be dealing with that when i take up the pain i thermal sensation in some part of each as we know there are two type or two modalities of touch the one is a precise or a discriminative touch this is also known as epicritic touch so that means it could be discriminated so this epicritic touch or a discriminative touch is carried by the posterior column we have seen and it gives or it provides information about the facts about the touch sensation that means the location the moment the strength and other attributes <coughs> sorry of touch all other attributes of touch which is carried by the posterior column there is another touch modality which is a non -discrim non discriminative this is known as a crude touch sensual touch or affective touch this touch is a poorly localized vague blurred transmitted slowly as compared to the discriminative touch and it is associated with the emotions it is carried by the anterior spinothalamic tract the emotional aspects of sensation include coming of a baby by the touch of a mother reassuring hug from a friend or a supportive pat from a father and many more such modalities of touch you have seen you can imagine about that what are the receptors 
and fibers carrying the crude touch and pressure sensations. The crude touch is by the free nerve endings located in the deeper structures that is in the dermis or below or even in the fascia from tactile and also from tactile corpuscles and from the receptors around the hair follicles. This is carried by the unmyelinated C fibers These are mechanosensor from the mechanosensors and they are low threshold fibers. They are carried by the dorsal root ganglion to the posterior horn, relayed in lamina 1 to 4 of the dorsal horn. You see that the lamina there on the other side, you can just see the mechanoreceptors are giving in one, two, th three, four, and uh, even five, fifth lamina also it is given. Some of the books mention that they relay even in the six, seven, eight lamina of the spinal cord. The crude pressure on the other hand is originating from the tactile corpuscles. Pessinian corpuscles are one of them. They are from the thinly myelinated A beta and A, a beta and A delta fibers, mostly A delta fibers that is a conduction velocity somewhere around uh, 15 to 20 meters per sec. Again, they relay in the posterior horn in the same lamina. On the left hand side you see that they are relayed there then after relaying in the respective neurons of the layer 1 to 5 then the exons of the second order neurons cross to the opposite side and ascend in the anterior funiculus or anterior side Hence, they are called ventral or anterior spinothalamic tract. And in the medulla, they become lateral to the medial lemniscal bundle. They are also traveling with the spinotectal tract and lateral spinothalamic tract. They relay in the ventro-postero lateral nucleus of thalamus. This is what the most of the textbooks describe. And the recent literature suggests that the projection of these neurons or projection of these fibers will be on the neurons of the medial lemniscal touch. So that means they may share a common thing which may reach third order neurons from here. That means there is some amount of a convergence or collateralism with this and they would reach the sensory cortex area 312. But since these touch sensations are vague, not defined. So this is uh, whatever this modality which has been described in many of the textbooks uh, may, not, uh, may not satisfy certain of our observations associated with this touch. Anyway, I will come back with that in my next slide. So then after reaching the cortex, you can see this is the homoonculus. That is the representation from which part of the body they are originating and it is represented in the topographical fashion in the sensory homunculus and you see that hand and the face and the tongue they have a larger rep representation 
and the remaining parts are having a lesser representation since the weakness of the touch raised a number of interesting issues regarding this touch because if this were to be loco localized with a topographical representation like this so then it should be as an adjunct to the post record so what happens if this touch sensation is lost or there is a spinal cord lesion if this sensation is lost so then what happens to the touch the touch still remains that means there is a representation in the cortex but it is vague however the emotional components associated to the touch will be missing when this tract is damaged anterior spinothalamic tract carrying the crude touch as i discussed and it is debated that it gives it is not giving only to the sensory nucleus in the thalamus that is the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus which supplies to the sensory parietal cortex besides this it is also relayed or it also gives information or relay into the posterior ventromedial nucleus of the thalamus you can just see posterior ventral nucleus of the thalamus on the the other uh, right hand side in b you can see it clearly ventral posterior medial that nucleus of the thalamus and this nucleus gives efferents to the insular cortex i will discuss about the insular cortex in my subsequent slides then it also gives information or relays into the medial dorsal nucleus this medial dorsal nucleus which is you can just see uh, in both the things very well uh, represented it supplies the limbic cortex that is cingulate cortex the posterior ventral medial nucleus supplies to the insular cortex which becomes a sensory component of the sensory processing of the this touch crude touch the medial dorsal nucleus of the the that will be the limbic aspect the affective behavior of the touch thus we can say that it relays in three nuclei in the thalamus you can just see here on the left hand side the anterior spinal thalamic tract ascends up gives in thalamus medial dorsal nucleus one side mdvc it is written as mdvc and ventral medial posterior vm pivo from the ventral medial posterior it is given to the introspective cortex that introspective cortex is the insular cortex and also area 3a that becomes the sensory cortex that is sensory cortex then from the medial dorsal nucleus it gives to anterior cingulate gyrus these areas whatever the areas it is supplying that means the the efferents from ventro medial posterior nucleus and the medial dorsal nucleus they are 
supplying to number of structures amygdala hypothalamus orbito frontal cortex uh, the free frontal cortex the brain stem homeostatic uh, regions that is the reticular system and uh, nucleus accumbens and a number of uh, structures all over the entire cortex so these will provide sensory and emotional and motivational aspect of the touch from the body the insular cortical connections we just see little bit detail this is uh, taken from the current biology you can just see the insular cortex and the functions they have listed the functions of 1 to 12 or 13 i just read sensory processing salience detection that means a known to unknown the valence assessment valence is the degree of the affection in in the sense that is uh, the person whether he is a loved or a hated or a friend or a foe something like that number 4 is it integrates all sensory modalities number 5 is an in, it provides the introspection thinks about so then after the introspection it has the autonomic control it will try to have the autonomic uh, influences in terms of the changes in the uh, blood pressure heart rate or other visceral components then we have number 7 it is it is working with the brain networking the entire brain networking and it will also look into the risk assessment outcome prediction and once that means it tries to have the judgment or decision making so these are associated with the emo- emotions so then in the risk assessment you can see that anticipate anticipations whether to um, approach or accept an individual or avoid an individual that type of behavior that is a flexible behavior anticipating these things but i have placed integration introspection emotion socialization decision making socialization emotion associated with socialization and decision making becomes important part of the insular connections receiving from the group touch the information coming from the dorsal medial or medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus so they they make they give it to the cingulate cortex that is the forming the limbic cortex it has a neural networking with the amygdala lateral prefrontal cortex parietal cortex insular cortex also the motor area the spinal cord hippocampus other limbic regions also the caudate nucleus the cingulate cortex connects hub of emotions the sensation and action so that means it connects the insular cortex also here and it takes up all the information and processes it the pathways involved in motivational processing and together with the other centers thus it makes uh, the reward centers of the brain so that means with the nucleus accumbens and this component together they become a reward center once that means a particular touch whether it is rewarding or not now i come back here i mentioned an example a um, child the infant usually cries and uh, when the infant cries and uh, somebody else stranger touches and it will increase the crying at a higher level so that means it will not stop the moment their mother touches it calms down it becomes cool okay now you can associate all those emotional reactions of the of the infant because now that touch is developed well so it is not the precision here and this is the uh, crude touch that is making the miracle the cingulate cortex projects pathways to the lateral prefrontal cortex and involved in the contr- executive control of the sensory modality the working memory associated with this the crude touch and the learning the as what is the working memory associated to the touch whatever the type of touch 
the modality of touch so here there is no discrimination there is there is no discrimination on the spot the discrimination is done by the posterior column sensation now you look back the same thing i have mentioned here the connections of the somatosensory area amygdala prefrontal area motor cortex caudate nucleus hippocampus uh, nucleus accumbens hypothalamus reticular system so many areas on this side you have that graph of uh, this figure showing that uh, blue blue component extended will becomes the entire cingulate cortex so the blue one is the cortical limbic system or the anterior cortex so this will be associated with the connection with the prefrontal cortex you can just see the frontal lobe and uh, this thing and you have the orange one is the amygdala so then you have the dentate gyrus and the hipp hippocampus situated there so that means the cingulate cortex is associated with the attention social interaction the motivation emotional stress and learning here amygdala is involved amygdala gives impulses to the hypothalamus whether whether it is uh, um, the child has to cry further or child has to stop crying so that is a uh, effective response so then emotional that that is amygdala will give it to hypothalamus and then it may control or amygdala will give to the motor cortex that will stop whatever then the that similar type of touch is stored in the hippocampus for learning and subsequent memory so this is about the cingulate cortex what are the clinical significance of group touch or sensual touch in lesions of the spine anterior spinothalamic tract neurologically crude touch still persists as a part of the sensation carried by the posterior column we test it by some blunt object touching and trying to ask them to identify whether he feels or not feels so that is the test we perform but that is not the real aspect of what we are discussing however that means that aspect persists in that in the lesions of the spinothalamic tract but the emotional aspects associated with the touch is lost say for example for uh, assumption purposes a child is not having that anterior spinothalamic tract so then the soothing effect does not work so that means emotional component is lost another important thing studies have been done in parents who have not given the skin contact be usually because the in some of the studies in usa where the child was not given to the mother for some days for some or the other reason and such children when they develop later year have a greater tendency to exhibit the psychosocial abnormalities even up to the schizophrenia so that means this contact parental skin contact will have some social interactions and the child develops normally this is the significance of this crude touch summary of the crude or affective touch or sensual touch known as a emotional touch for example hug from a friend or a touch you got as a child from your mother it is a non discriminative form of a touch mediated by special sensors called c tactile fibers that means free nerve endings with the c nerve fibers conveys information slowly it is a vague because in terms of where is being touched is not known relayed in the dorsal horn neurons in the spinal cord and cross opposite side to the anterior spinothalamic tract relay in vpl vmpo that is the ventromedial posterior nucleus of thalamus then medio dorsal nucleus of the thalamus or dorsomedial nucleus of thalamus
thalamic processes reach sensory area 312 insular cortex that is for introspection integration emotion and socialization and cingulate cortex emotions and their responses also memory and learning and motivation it sends information to the limbic system and posterior insula that is crucial for social bonding friends regarding the sexual touch not much is known and uh, i will uh, i do not know what are the various pathways or uh, these things and but it is placed in the anterior spinothalamic tract in the next lecture i would be dealing with the physiology of thermal sensations i will come back with the physiology of thermal sensation till that time try to answer these some of the questions for your own evaluation thank you very much